In this tutorial, we cover the basics of moving, rotating, scaling, and mirroring objects. These operations are applied using the transformation tools located in the 13th row of the modeling tools. Before we proceed, a few explanations are in order regarding the topological levels. These indicate whether an operation will be applied to a complete object, which is the default, or to a part of an object such as a point, a segment, face, etc. The desired topological level is selected by clicking on a modifier icon found on the fourth row of the tool palette. For this tutorial, select the object topological level, which is the default setting. If you want to move an object to a new position, select the Move tool. Click on a visible edge of the object, drag it to the desired position, and click again. While you do this, you may want to observe the prompts palette in the lower left corner of the modeling window. This is where you are prompted about the next step and where numeric information can be read as you move the object. You can also use the prompts palette to enter numeric values. In order to rotate an object, select the Rotate tool. Click on the object. The first point clicked on the reference plane is for the center of the rotation. Click a second point anywhere to start rubber banding the rotation. Click a third point to end the rotation. The prompts palette walks you through the steps and you can type in values if desired. There are two scale or resize operations. The first one scales each dimension of an object, x, y, or z, independently, which is determined by the way the mouse is moved. The second operation scales all the dimensions uniformly according to the motion of the mouse. To apply an independent scale, select the independent scale tool. Click on the object to select it. Then click on the reference plane to set the base point of the scale. The object will scale toward or away from this base point. Click one more time to start rubber banding the object as it is scaled. Assuming XY is the reference plane, moving the mouse in the X or Y direction will scale the object independently in the respective direction. Observe in the prompts palette that a different scale factor can be entered for the X, Y, and Z directions. Click one final time to end the scaling. If you want to uniformly scale an object, that is to apply the same scale factor to the X, Y, and Z direction, select the Uniform Scale tool. The operation is executed as before, except that the distance the mouse now travels relative to the base point determines the scale factor that is applied uniformly to all directions. Observe in the prompts palette that a single scale factor is used for the X, Y, and Z direction. Different methods of mirroring can be selected from the dialog of the mirror tool. The default is what is called dynamic, which will be used in the next example. Select the mirror tool. Click on the object to select it. Then click on the reference plane. As soon as you do, a line is rubber banded. This is the axis of reflection and is a line perpendicular to the line defined by the click point and the position of the mouse as it moves about. One mouse click completes the operation. At this point, you note that when your object was reflected, your original object disappeared. Most commonly, when we do reflections, we like to also keep the original object. To do this, we need to tell FormZ to make a copy of the original object and reflect the copy. This is done by using the proper self-copy modifier. The self-copy modifiers are in the 12th row right above the transformation tools. The first one on the left is the self-modifier and is the default. This is the one that caused the reflection operation to be applied to the original object. The second from the left is the single copy icon. Select it, undo the previous reflection, and execute the reflection operation again. Observe now that the original object is retained and the operation is applied to a copy. It should be noted, of course, that the self-copy modifiers affect all the transformation operations. To apply a transformation to several objects, select the Pick tool, then select the desired objects. Select a transformation tool, such as Move. Click anywhere in the window and drag the mouse. Click a second time to end the move. To deselect the objects, select the Pick tool again, then click any blank area in the modeling window. 
For the reflection operation, we made a single copy. You can also make multiple copies in one step. Select the Continuous Copy modifier, third in the palette, and move an object as we did before. Observe that with each click of the mouse, another copy is made at the cursor location. Double click anywhere to end the copy process. The fourth modifier allows you to do multiple copies at repeated intervals. Here is how. Select the Repeat Copy modifier. Click on an object to select it. Then drag it and click again. A copy appears. Next, click again anywhere on the screen and another copy is made at the same distance. Each click of the mouse produces another copy at the same distance from the previous. Double click anywhere to end the copying process. If you need to make a specific number of copies at a set increment, then double click on the multi-copy modifier, which is fifth in the palette, select even increment, and in the number of copies field, enter four. Click the object to select it, then click a second time to define the distance between two objects. Observe that four copies are evenly spaced the same distance as your first two clicks. If you need to make a specific number of copies that are evenly spaced between two points, then double click on the multi-copy modifier and select divide distance. Click the object to select it, then click a second time to define the total distance to move it. Observe that four copies are evenly distributed between two points that you clicked. 